I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and sometimes when you're out of the office while you're traveling for work, you get some surprises when you get back. And I'm not just talking about crazy bills and pranks that my office mates throw on me. I'm talking about new devices in the office. This is a Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. It was announced a couple of weeks ago. Came while I was in Berlin covering the IFA events and the pre-briefs as a result. Let's take a look in the full unboxing. But first, special thanks to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with tablets, phones, and more for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get a tablet, a phone, whatever the case may be, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your settings, and more. So when you walk out the door with your new toy, you're good to go. Let's take a look. Is the Note 10.1 in its S Pen all it's hyped up to be? We'll find out in the unboxing, which starts right now. Look what we have here. This was waiting for me when I got back after my long couple of weeks of travel. The Galaxy Note 10.1 is finally in the phone dog offices. Now this is obviously a Wi-Fi version and it's the 16 gigabyte version, but it's available now at 16 gigabytes, 499.99, 32 gigabytes, 549.99, and available in wider gray. And to give you a quick recap of the specs, we can take a look at the back of the box here. Quad core, 1.4 gigahertz processor, two gigabytes of RAM, a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, five megapixel rear facing camera, 1.9 megapixel front facing camera, and it's packing Android 4.0 with the TouchWiz user interface. So here it is, high end precision input with the S Pen. You can see the design is much different than uh, Galaxy Notes, or I should say tablets of the past from Samsung, as you can see here. Kind of chrome on the edges, got a nice kind of blue look and feel here, a blue uh, look to the screen. You've got your chrome sides, you got your camera on the back along with that same blue color and chrome. It looks really nice, it's a good looking tablet from afar. And then like I said, packing a uh, 7,000 milliamp hour battery, so battery wise you should be good to go throughout most of the day. Now, much like the Galaxy Note and the uh, recently announced Samsung Galaxy Note 2, it features an S Pen, so you can do all kinds of stuff on the screen, and now that we've seen this S Pen, I can tell you it's a little bit more similar to the one that comes on the Galaxy Note 2. Now, out of the box, you get a couple of things. Galaxy Note 10.1, your instruction manuals, I won't spend too much time on that. Media Hub, health, safety, and warranty, get your USB cable, get an AC adapter module, and then of course you have your US prong here, which slides right down in there, and then gives you this Samsung USB dongle. So you can uh, plug in your USB cable, and of course it is a proprietary input down here at the bottom, no micro USB or anything like that. But this is the Galaxy Note 10.1, so I'm going to get this stuff out of the way and we're going to focus a little bit on the device. Up here you can see an infrared port, you've got a micro SD card slot, your power button, your volume rocker, and a headphone jack. I believe it just said that, but we'll say it again. You know what? It's Monday, and so we can say things twice. That's what you do on Mondays, guys. 10.1 inch display, obviously, and I'm going to get some of these stickers off while we're powering it on. And of course, I have my S Pen right here. So Galaxy Note 10.1 powering up. Right now, I love the idea of the S Pen. I will say that, you know, I carried the Galaxy Note for 30 days as part of my 30-day challenges that I do on the site. And about 15 days into the challenge, I was like, you know what, this is pretty useful for taking notes during meetings or if you're in classes, you're in college, it could be great for that as well. Now on a phone, the functionality is obviously reduced because of the screen size, but when you get into something like 10.1 inches, it can be really useful. Now, another thing this offers is what they call true multitasking, where you can do some things on the display on top of other things also on the display. So here's your home screen device successfully updated. We'll hit OK. And some things I like, you know, I'm going to go over some things that I absolutely love about Samsung's uh, tablet offerings. This is one big one for me, the fact that it's got the screen capture button right here. So when I want to capture the screen, it's that easy. I can capture a screenshot, send it off. So if I'm looking at something, I can capture it, draw some notes, send it off to somebody and say, hey, be sure to check this out. So we'll come down here and these are the things that you can do as multitasking while you're on the device. So let's say you know, you're in the middle of the applications drawer here, you're kind of looking through and seeing what comes pre-installed, which while we're here, we should probably take a look at that. All Share Play, Barnes & Noble Nook, Crayon Physics. Of course, this is a Wi-Fi version, so no carrier installed bloatware, but what you do get is some Samsung stuff. Netflix, get your Google Play, excuse me, functionality there. PS Touch, S Note, of course, get your S Planner, S Voice as well, and then I can scroll over and see that I've got textbooks, Video Maker, Video Player, and of course, Galaxy Note screensaver uh, as well. So widgets over here. So very similar look and feel to what you would expect from a Samsung mobile product in terms of the user interface. Very similar to the Galaxy S3, very similar to the Galaxy Note 2 with that new version of a TouchWiz user interface. But let's say you know, you're in the middle of this and let's just do, for example, you know, let's say you're in the gallery. Here in the gallery, you're taking a look at this kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I need to check my email, or I need to do an S Note. I can click down here on S Note, it'll pop up up top, and I can say call, John, reissue 
with phone. So I can call John, reissue uh, re with phone, I can hit OK, and I will save the S note, but I can do this while I'm browsing the web or while I'm checking email. So if there's something I just need to you know, do and I can't, I'm not gonna remember it more than about 30 seconds, I can write it down on S note. When you work in media, let me tell you, your brain, you work off 30 seconds and you work off minute segments. So if you forget something, it's a bad thing. So as soon as you see something or think about something, you should write it down, and for that purpose, this S note functionality is very useful. So you saw what came with it out of the box, and then over here, you've got five home screens, which I can scroll back and forth between. So again, very similar here to the offering that you would see on a mobile device, like the Note 2 and like the uh, Galaxy S3. So down here, we can take a look. Wi-Fi networks are available, but you get kind of a touch whiz look and feel here with the clock. You've got your shortcuts, Wi-Fi, GPS, sound, screen rotation, and again, much like the later version of touch whiz, you have the ability to scroll through here and easily select what you need. Settings here as well, and we can go into settings and take a look, and obviously, you got your data usage here, you got your Bluetooth, you got your sound and your display, and because of the 10.1 inch display, it's maximizing screen real estate here. So we can go to wallpaper, motion, power saving, and more, and you can see that the settings are pretty similar across the board. Let's take a look, for example, because like I said, you know, this thing is designed around multitasking, or so Samsung says they want this thing to be designed around multitasking. Another great feature is this multi-screen feature up at the top. So I can click this, I can open up other things that take advantage of the multi-feature functionality. So email, for example, and it will split the screen where I can access the web browser and email. And then when I'm done with this one, I can exit out and go from there and then set up email. Same thing over here, once everything was configured, I could use multi-screen, switch over to the gallery. So again, it's all about multitasking here and you can take advantage of that on the Galaxy Note 10.1. Another thing, let's take a look at S Note here because this functionality very similar to, again, what's in the Galaxy Note with Android uh, 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich, and the Galaxy Note 2 as well with Jelly Bean. So we'll load up Note right now and you can take a look here. Again, we can draw, take notes, and again, similar functionality here with the function features, the shape match, so I can go over here and do the circular shape match stuff, triangle shape match, much like I did on the Note with the premium uh, suite software upgrade that we saw a few months back uh, in San Francisco. So S Note here, and then of course multi-screen as well. Like I said, I can go over to Internet Video Player, Polaris Office, I can switch like this back to the gallery, and then I can access this from this side of the screen, which I think is pretty cool. So again, screenshots here, we'll disable motion. We're gonna go ahead and cancel this one out. And you can see here again, you can take advantage of, uh, let me make sure here, do, 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 do. let's see if we can do this. Let's edit this, see what we can do here in terms of editing. Let's see if we can bring it over into, uh, so Photoshop Touch actually loads up, which is uh, pretty useful as well. And you can see your buttons, even though they're minimized, are still down here and I can access home, for example, right there. Recent applications right here and get rid of those pretty easily by removing them that way. Speakers on the front as well. Let's take a quick look at the keyboard so you can see what it looks like. We'll load up S Planner just for example. And again, nice, taking advantage of that 10.1 inch display. We'll load up, uh, we'll just do a title for example so you can see what the Samsung keypad looks like out of the gate here. Then you have this functionality where you can switch between it and Google Voice typing and then any other third party keyboard that you see fit. But look and feel pretty similar here. Why I started to do the, uh, the swipe motion that I'm used to on Samsung, but let's say, hey there, just for example, pretty easy to type on, nice large keys, and they're separated with some space. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1, the much improved S Pen, the new multitasking features, and the functionality of the S Pen on the Galaxy Note 10.1. Be sure to like us on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're doing the greatest tech giveaway ever too, and the first drawing starts tomorrow, Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, so be sure to check that out. Follow me on Twitter as well. Let me know what you think of tablets in general, the Note 10.1. Is it all it lives up to be? Is it not the greatest in the world? I'd love to hear from you. Phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter, Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching, keep it locked for continuing coverage as we do a review and a bunch of dogfights between this and high-end contenders on the market. We'll see you next time.